Hi there, I'm Patrick Moore, and this video is part one of a series of videos about the obliquus capitis inferior muscle. You might want to know what the atlas looks like when it's rotating on the axis and what it looks like when the muscle fires on one side. So I've um, created a cute little puppet thing. Um, it's only a puppet because when I pull the strings and the muscles contract and the bones move, it's a skeleton um, that I'm kind of proud of. And I believe this will show you more accurately than any still photos or two-dimensional things on a page. And it will get you really going, oh, I get it. That's how the joint moves. And that's the whole purpose of this video. Um, I'm going to show you first the ideal motion, um, which is pure rotation, like that. And then I'm going to show you what happens if there's increased stress or guarding in the obliquus inferior muscle. And, and if the muscle is contracting far more on one side than the other, or, or actually spasming, it actually pulls your spine out of alignment. Um, the next thing you'll see is um, me standing the back of my head, what pure rotation looks like. So um, you'll see me from the back, and when my head, when my nose goes that way, you have to imagine that the back of my head is going that way. Um, and so rotation is named for what the front of the body is doing. So this is my left hand. If my nose is going towards my left, that's called left rotation. Even though the back of my head is going to my right. This is pure rotation to the right, which means that the nose is going right, the back of the head goes left. Front of the head moves right, while the back of the head is moving left. Um, and you'll see when the nose goes that way, the back of the head goes that way. When the nose goes that way, the back of the head goes that way. And there's one spot of hair right in the middle that while the head is rotating, doesn't go anywhere. And that's the axis of rotation. It stays in one place, the head rotates around it. Just like the earth rotates around its axis. Let's say you're the therapist doing range of motion with this person's head. If you move it this slowly or even slower, that way the person's brain does not get alarmed and senses you as a friend. Okay, this is the first take. We're looking at the back of a skeleton, at the back of the neck. Right, uh, here is the back of the head. Um, C1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And this is the spinous process of uh, T1, which is immobile because um, T1 has ribs coming off right here, and so it's practically immobile. But I have these little strings attached. This is the string, if I pull it, will contract the right obliquus inferior, which goes from the spinous process of C2 to the transverse process of C1. So when I pull the string, it will pull those two bones closer together. And what do you think will happen when I pull that string? First, I'm going to give a demonstration of what happens during normal motion if uh, C2 is the stable bone that's been stabilized. And most frequently it is because it's got these um, joints with the, with the bones beneath it, and it's got um, stabilization, it's got discs between this one and this one. It doesn't have a disc, 
with the one up above it between C2 and C1 because that's a, a more mobile kind of floppy joint where the ones below it are, are discus and they're kind of more stable like you see here. So I'm going to pull on the right obliqueus inferior and we're going to see what happens. Oh, the head rotates to the right. So this person is now looking, their ear would be over here. Their ear has come backward. So now if I pull the string for the left obliqueus here, he moves back to normal, looking straight ahead. What? Mom? Over there? Oh, hi, Mom. Yeah, I'll be home later. Now he turns back. What was I saying to you again, Fred? Oh, yeah. Hey, look at that car coming. Boy, that's a nice Corvette. Look at it go. Mm hmm Going down the road from right to left. There it goes. Wow. Look at the tailpipes on that. Okay. Now looking straight ahead again. So you can see how floppy and easy this moves left to right, left to right. And if you can see in there more, when the head is turned a little bit, you can see the, the dens. Yeah, that's what it's called, of C2. That's being stable, and that C1 is rotating on it like a ring. Okay, pulling on the right obliqueus. Pulls the right ear backwards. And this hole we see is the mastoid process. It's about where the, uh, a little bit lower than the ear on this side. And the reason I have a string coming out of there is to represent the, the muscles that come off of there. Um, the muscle coming off going backwards there would be the, be the splenius capitis. If there were a muscle going off forward would be the sternocleidomastoid. Now you can see that um, when the obliqueus is shortened on the right side, see how short it is now? It's just like uh, less than an inch. And this other one is probably, you can't see the whole length, but it's probably up to about three inches there. That's unrealistic. Uh, a muscle can only shorten to about half of its length. The right splenius capitis is also shortened, and the left splenius capitis is, is very long. So the, the left splenius capitis is a friend to the left uh, obliqueus, and the right to the right. So when this is shortened, this is shortened. And later in our therapy, when we get our finger on here, you can get one finger on here and get another finger on here at the same time. Switch fingers. Work this up and down all along here. So that's what, that's what our therapy is going to do. We're going to be working on this while it's in its shortened position and then working on this while it's in its shortened position. If you try to pull on the splenius capitis alone, it kind of pulls the head backward. You see how it's like a lot of force to do that? You'd see more like this. However, the obliquuses are designed only to rotate <coughs> because it only goes between C1 and C2 and the only thing C1 and C2 can allow, the only motion that can allow, is rotation. And you see also the angle of uh, obliquus is more of a horizontal angle almost while the splenius has more of an angle like this. So the splenius will have more of a downward force when it pulls, and the obliqueus will have hardly any downward force. It's mostly um, sideways force, which pulls these two bones closer to each other. So for these reasons, the obliqueus is the one and only muscle dedicated to rotating the head, and it's the best, it has the best mechanical advantage for rotating the head from 45 degrees this way back to neutral to 45 degrees this way. Cool. Okay.